good afternoon everyone the world is full of diamonds and gems and we are having some of them here today to make this event more successful and much more memorable so with this fresh coat i roshni trivedi would like to give my heartiest welcome to our chief guest to our director sir to our joint director ma'am our all beloved faculties and all fellow friends we the team of gyan sangram feel extremely delighted to get overwhelming response of yours with very first session of industry academia linkage series which had already been conducted the day before yesterday mr arpit hathi sir explained various aspects of hr along with its strengths challenges benefits and what not and today also we are blessed to have such a great personality with us so i would like to welcome mr shubhamoy saha sir as a speaker of the day so on behalf of whole ks family i roshni trivedi welcome you very warmly sir firstly i want to share a brief introduction of mr saha sir but it's difficult for me to put this in a words that how much amount of knowledge and skills that are possessed by him so it would take i guess another whole session for me to describe him but uh, still i am trying to uh, introduce him very briefly so sir has done his mba with finance specialization in the year 1999 from sardar patel university he is a gold medalist and second rank holder he started his career as a branch head at a stock holding corporation of india sir has experience of various corporate and entrepreneurial function from last two decades he has worked as regional director and vice president at anand rathi security and financial services limited along with this he is experienced in organizational leadership multi segment product management profit center business model people development upskilling and what not sir has always try to create and push knowledge intensive culture in the industry and at the place wherever he works currently he is in the domain of strategic consulting he is founder of universal skills so other than this also there are many more achievements and skills that are possessed by him so it's like once in a blue moon situation for all of us where we have such a great personality with all of us so uh, we are extremely happy to have you sir so without wasting even a fraction of a second i would like to invite you again and pardon me sir if i make any mistake now over to you sir <clears throat> thank you roshni thank you very much uh, it's pleasure for me sir a uh, very decorated background you have given thank you sir <laughs> right so i don't think there can be any mistakes uh the personality of somebody should should be completely knowledge based and uh, when he uh, speaks or when he is able to uh, express his point of view that should be very clear to everybody else around him or the world around him right so thanks for everything and thanks for uh, uh, inviting me and thanks to all the senior authorities of the b school uh, it's been a pleasure i have been uh, part of b schools for last almost 7 8 years uh, i have been uh, into the into the uh, you know uh, capability development of uh, school of employability 
I worked with uh, ICFA, B, uh, you know, the EA, uh, CFA, ICFA Business School. I worked with EDI. I worked with uh, PDPU, a little bit of GLS, and uh, uh, Somlalit also. And uh, one of my major uh, endeavors is to create uh, good employable resources for the industry. Right. So uh, there are a few personal passions. And one of the passions that I share, uh, one of them is uh, creating good, knowledgeable resources uh, to work in the industry so that uh, our industry grows and is able to achieve capability in the global uh, scenario. So that is uh, the thing that, in fact, that is the thing I'd like to start with today. Uh, <clears throat> some of the questions which have come to me, you know, uh, and I ask that uh, what should be uh, the theme for the day and what should be uh, what all of us, all of the students would like me to talk about. So some of the themes which have come to me and uh, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, take them up uh, as uh, the starting points and then get into some details. So the first question uh, which I have on my uh, notepad is, uh, which questions the students would like to ask me, right? Is uh, the functions of HR. Now, uh, let me just play. Uh, you, all of you would have already undergone uh, in your uh, academics and in uh, with various other uh, experts, various other academic experts. You would have already gone through the theoretical part of uh, HR or people management. Today, uh, let me uh, take up some of the practical aspects which are very much needed uh, by the industry. And HR being a very, very significant part of the ecosystem. But again, uh, expressing that uh, are we able to uh, harness or are we able to leverage the total advantage uh, that the HR ecosystem has to offer? My answer is no. The industry today is not able to leverage or not able to uh, get advantage of the complete HR or people management life cycle that should be, uh, you know, happening. So that becomes a very important uh, uh, reason to uh, get these capabilities in place so that practically we are able to service the industry in a manner which is much, much beyond than we are doing right now. So how is it? So my, uh, my revelations will answer these questions. And at the same time, it will also talk about uh, other such questions like functions of HR. The students have asked me, you know, things like, uh, what is a dream job? How do we manage employees during pandemic? If I were a student, how would we prepare for the interview? What should be the training procedures in HR company? What are the benefits of an HR function? And uh, ultimately, how HR industry will grow in the next few years or next upcoming years, right? So let me start with a very simple uh, game. I'll keep on writing the points also so that I can give it to somebody for a year. What is HR practically? And how is it, uh, how should it contribute to business? Now, let me tell you, very clearly. Today, why are we not getting the benefits of the HR ecosystem? 
the first and foremost reason is we are not able to explore our potential there are two types of uh, values that we can create one we can create transactional values so we can complete pro complete the processes we can probably achieve our uh, the needs of the organization you know in operational terms and we can uh, also uh, take care that whatever is necessary for the business as a general in general is being is is is, is provided to the the business as such right this is one side of the coin completely transactional now when i say transactional there is a threat of becoming very clerical there is a threat of becoming very operational there is a threat of becoming very very general now i come to the other side of the coin the other side of the coin is termed as transformational you know hr stands for human resources people management etc etc and probably we control or the hr function controls the most important ingredient of business and that is the manpower the people the people actually contribute the capability of the people it's the capability of the people that makes the organization meet its meet its goals so if every human being is able to meet its goal and uh, supersede it or go beyond the call of duty the organization will be able to not only grow but it will be prospering but there's a very serious uh, revelation that uh, i would like to share which has happened a few years back uh and it has been done by one of the stalwarts of uh, the indian industry so there was this uh, hr congress where uh, respectable mr narayan murthy was present he was the chairman of infosys mr kv kv kamat was there he was the chairman for icici banks a bank and many other uh, stalwarts were there so uh, one of the correspondent you know asked mr kamat that sir you are the leader of the best private and largest private bank in the country right and you are heavily focused towards technology you are investing in technology you are uh, seeing that all the processes are automated and you are bringing uh, private banking to a much much better level so that people can enjoy the uh, you know the user interface people can enjoy banking how much is the contribution of people to this scenario to which mr kamath answered that see we want to create a complete automated system where we should see that uh, the role of human beings are performed by machines is performed by technology so that uh, there is high accuracy high sustainability and high dependability on the system people might uh, be you know might become a bias in the system so if i create a system which is much labor oriented there are chances of being inaccurate there are chances of becoming unsustainable and there are chances of becoming uh, redundant so i am creating a sys ecosystem in which technology plays a much much more higher role the same question was asked to mr narayan murthy can you define that because of people how do you define infosys and people together he had a very uh, humorous uh, you know thing to say he said that if 10% of your people are honest sincere hard working they are they have ownership of their jobs they are doing everything properly your business will stand up your business will operate your business will become functional your people are sincere hard working 
they have ownership your company will do well your company will do profits if 30% of your people are sincere honest hard working they have ownership then your company will become an infosys that's what his disclosures were right and he meant to say that if 30% of your people are, are so and so you know are honest hard working etc your company can become an infosys but i haven't discovered 31 i have only discovered 30 and if i am correct and i am able to make 30% of my organization honest sincere and hard working it will become an infosys it has become an infosys sorry right and there leaves a big gap so what about the 70% of the people who are in the organization and this is what is happening uh, everywhere my dear students the transformational role of hr happens to be human productivity it happens to be human performance it happens to be human success the new role of hr in the 21st century should be to make employees successful the responsibility of making your employees successful is yours and it's a huge integrity and ethical value you carry in the organization your marketing counterparts will look at marketing your finance counterparts will look at finance and accounting your other support services will look at themselves you are the only one as a human resource to look at all of them together you are looking at sales you are looking at uh, operations and productions you are looking at uh, support services and therefore at the people management side or the human resources side we happen to be the most important ingredient of a business ecosystem we happen to be the person who can run businesses we happen to be the person who can develop capabilities we happen to be the person who can make human beings successful but for that we will have to change the agenda that we have you know been able to see so far we have been able to see the transactional part of hr now it's a time to see the transformational part of hr if there is no transformation unfortunately industry will continue to suffer people will continue to suffer and there will be no sustainability or holistic development of human beings and the business ecosystem so the first thing that i want to make everybody of us in the universe who are handling businesses or handling hr people management ecosystems is we need to shift from a transactional nature of business to a transformational nature of business we must see that each human being is successful under our domain under our ceiling whatever company we work for the company therefore develops capabilities there are a set of strengths which are the strength of which are the set of strength of the people or the set of employees themselves which ultimately become the strength for the entire organization and that's how the organization will grow so we as hr resources we as uh, part of people management have a big role to play and making in making businesses successful and a holistic role to play so that is my first disclosure that we need to leverage our situations and we need to contribute more to business we are next to the entrepreneur because the first thing that an entrepreneur needs is a good team the human resource function needs to be in place the people management function needs to be in place that is point number 1 point number 2 uh
has given us a lot of ways to think. It has made us a force to think that businesses from the tradition now need to migrate to a conventional model. So we have been growing. We have been growing in the last more than two decades. But unfortunately, the entire development which has taken place in the last 25 years for Indian history is completely service based. With the birth of Infosys in 1995, we have seen different industries come into focus, come into the picture, which is uh, you can start with IT, you can start with IT enabled services, you can then come to telecom, then you can come to banking and financial services. They can, you can come to retail, you can come to e-commerce. The entire development which has taken place in the last 25 years in Indian history, in Indian industrial history, is of the service uh, community or the service background, service-based industries. Manufacturing has actually taken a backseat. What used to be the contribution of uh, manufacturing to the GDP has now come down to as less as uh, around uh, 2 to 12%. And services have started contributing a huge percentage to the Indian GDP. That has left a vacuum in the development of uh, the people ecosystem. We have borrowed a lot of concepts from our uh, developed counterparts. We are still a developing country. So we have borrowed a lot of concepts from our uh, developed counterparts. But people are different in our country. Ecosystems are different in our country. The regionality of uh, our country is different. Therefore, it is very important to adopt whatever multinational corporations have taught us or we have copied from them in the last 20, 25 years to adopt to Indian psychology, to Indian people and to Indian regionalities. It's like, you know, who developed first uh, education policy. All of you know that uh, recently we have uh, uh, created our own education policy. Uh, after a lot of years, our education policy has been revamped, which was a much needed uh, change. And we have come up with a new education policy. The first education policy the, for our country was developed by the Britishers. The Britishers had developed our education policy because they wanted an educated crowd to run India. They wanted an educated team of clerks who can uh, understand the language and run various operational functions across the length and breadth of the British Empire, across the country. And therefore, they came out with our first education policy and they created an army of uh, educated professionals to handle various operational matters in the language that they best used at that point of time. Right. I feel that the same thing has happened to a country like India. We have uh, adopted or we have actually kind of uh, traveled on the path of our developed counterparts on the science and uh, functionality that they have brought to our country and that is called as human resource development earlier india was a traditionally manufacturing country from textiles to from agriculture to textiles right to chemicals to metals so the new industry which have come have uh, kind of journeyed on the journalistic HR models that have been brought in by our uh, developed counterparts from uh, hiring people to engaging people. But the point here is that we are much, much beyond, or sorry, much, much uh, late as far as uh, understanding the scientificness of the models that are being practiced in the world right now. So whether they are models for understanding human beings, when we are hiring, we need to have knowledge of psychology because one bad hire, 
one wrong person taking taken into the company can destroy the company one bad apple one bad fish will destroy your entire basket of fruits and your entire aquarium so it's very important to understand to hire the right people for that you will have to have knowledge of uh, psychology even there are important tools in uh, our hr fraternity called psychometrics you should have the conventional knowledge of psychometrics to hire people and hire people according to the needs that are required in the organization which can be fitted into the cultural aspect of the organization this is where your learning practical learning starts you need to see that your uh, you take care of people properly you onboard the people you are able to understand you are able to show them the universe of business properly you are able to express your expectations so you need to teach or train your business heads how to express the expectations that they have from their juniors from new people hired into the company and uh, you also need to see that uh, the people settle well into the company they are onboarded well they are able to understand the business structure they understand the expectations that they have uh, from uh, you know the expectations that the seniors have from them they are they are able to understand how should they report how should they deliver how should review take place how should feedbacks how should they understand feedbacks and the same time it is the responsibility of the hr to make the senior people also understand how to give feedback how to do a performance dialogue you know how to review the people how to tell them about their performance improvement points how to write good prescriptions for the employees at large. then there is a most important question of employee performance so you need to understand the models the conventional models of uh, performance management something which can't be measured can't be rewarded so if you can't measure something in uh, complete mathematical terms you can't reward people you can't understand how people will contribute you don't understand how what value people bring into the organization and therefore you are not able to understand how a person will be able to contribute to business right so you should be able to understand the different performance management techniques models whether it starts from a simple technique of uh, mbo management objectives whether it is a bsc or balanced score card whether it is 180 degrees with 360 degrees now people have also gone to much much better uh, performance management ecosystems right we at ethos have developed our own performance management ecosystem in order to uh, help companies um, establish the performance management uh, modules you then need to understand people better who is talented who is not you need to understand different models like nine quadrant model you need to understand how you can create uh, how you can understand how you can measure people on their potential to performance how you can do the nine quadrant model so there are a lot of scientificness hr is full of scientificness there is high amount of scientific tools and techniques in hr as compared to their other counterparts like marketing or finance and second thing there are a lot of innovations creativity that you can do with this function marketing is a very general function you need to be religious you need to be you need to follow the rules you need to see that you are able to uh, you know develop business close business in finance and accounts you have to really you know follow the rule you cannot create new accounting principles you cannot create new financing laws what you can do is follow the laws be compliant you can uh, see that you are accurate so i think the largest amount of potential for innovation or creativity lies in the hr function 
HR people are supposed to run businesses. But at the same time, if I ask you a question, which is an eye opener, that in the last 25 years of Indian business, how many people from HR background have become CEOs of businesses? How, how many people from HR background have become company directors, chief executive officers? The answer would be saddening. Most of the CEOs that are created come from the finance background, followed by marketing, followed by other functions. There are hardly any CEOs, very few CEOs who come from the HR background. And that is an eye opener. If I am saying that HR needs to understand all facets of business, HR can contribute to all functions of business, then HR is probably a, a function which knows everything. So why don't people from HR become CEOs? There should be maximum number of people from HR background who should become CEOs in companies in India. But that is not the truth. I'm sorry. Right. And that is what I meant by saying that whatever strengths we have, we are not able to leverage that fully. So coming back, everybody, one of us needs to understand that we at the HR side should be able to understand the businesses like any other function, whether it is finance or accounts, whether it's marketing, they know the business well. We should also know the business well, right? So starting from the business environment, what kind of business formats are there in India? What kind of business formats exist? What are the different uh, compliances or what are the different ways or ecosystems that these businesses operate in? This is where the learning starts. Then you come to various tools and techniques, as I've said, of creating an organization, creating people, creating teams, managing teams, training and development, the capability building of teams, and engaging employees. Employee engagement is, is a fantastic factor in today's conventional world. Now, unfortunately, again, when, what, when we talk about employee engagement, we understand that employee engagement is probably you know, having an informal interaction with the employees, having uh, you know extracurriculars activity done with employees again we as hr fraternity are wrong employee engagement is not extracurricular activities employee engagement is not informality employee engagement is a very formal tool so if you look at the gallup model gallup g a l l u p gallup is the one of the leading uh, companies in the world who focus on employee productivity, employee training, employee strengths, employee capability building. If you look at the engagement model, the Gallup engagement model, you will be able to see that engaging human beings is a very important fundamental. Let us go by facts. What is the engagement score in a country? What is the highest engagement score in the world? If you Google on that, you will find that today a developed country like US is the highest in terms of employee engagement score. But how much is the score, right? You will find that the employee score is engagement score is as less as 20 to 23%. What does that mean? That means out of every 100 employees who work in an organization, only 22, 23 employees are engaged and interested in the work that they are doing. They are the only productive part. So when Mr. Narayan Murthy said that if you have 30% people who are sincere, honest, have ownership, you will come out with a company like Infosys. Right? 
So if we cross tally it with this figure, that the engagement standard of employees and employers or managers in a country like US, which is the most advanced country in the world, is 22-23%. That means only those many people are engaged to the company that they're working for. 78% of people do not enjoy the work that they're doing. They are not engaged to their managers. They are not engaged to their employers, to their companies. Therefore, they don't have ownership. Right? This is a significant factor. So you can imagine if the percentage is that much less in a country like US, what would be the fate of things in India? I'm sorry to say that the engagement score of Indian companies would be probably in single digits, can be as less as four or five. Now, when I'm saying this, I don't have any official figures, but to my experiences, I can say that maybe in India, only five out of 100 employees are engaged to their managers. They are engaged to their companies. They are engaged to the business model. Therefore, they are productive, they are performance oriented, and they have ownership. Now, these 5% people, no doubt, will be the top management. So 95% of people in India are not engaged in their professions. This is a very serious question mark. And the answer to this lies in people practices. Why are we not able to engage our own people, our own employees to our businesses? And this is the, actually this is the result. This is the effect. The cause is something else, right? So employee engagement means that we are able to look into the lives of our people. We are able to see that they are successful. We are able to see that we are expressing our expectations very clearly. We are able to appraise or evaluate people very transparently. We are able to show them careers, right? Uh, all of you know, you know, all of you, all of, all of you have, uh, you know, gone through your student life. When you stepped into your first class, or you know, from your kindergarten, you stepped into class one. All of you knew that you have 12 years to study. All of you knew that there was another round of graduation or post graduation, you know, that has to be completed. So all of you knew that it is a good 17 years or 18 years ahead that you need to study. You need to study till class 10. You need to choose for your options. You need to study to your class 12. Then you need to do your graduation. And then you need to go and do a, your post graduation or something else. So you were very clear. You knew beforehand that what is going to be the fate of things in the next 18 years, right? My question is, when you join your job, are you aware about the next 18 years? In which company? The next 18 years of your life are as predictable as your schooling and your higher studies. The question will be maybe, uh, you know, not even 1% of the companies will be able to tell you okay, what, where will you find yourself in the next 18 years? That is the starting point. If you don't know where you're going to be in the next 18 years, what is your career going to shape out? What is your journey? What are you expecting out of life? It would be very difficult to give a good career to all the people, right? There is a skill emergency situation in India. In India, we have hardly 40, 50 vocations that our students can you know, study in. World standards are 10 times above this. A country like US has close to around 450 vocations in which students can develop their careers. We have only 10% of it, right? 
and slowly, maybe in policy, things will come into the limelight. Now, this is where I step into my third question, where uh, people have asked, uh, students have asked, that uh, as a student, how should we prepare for an interview? Or how should we prepare for facing a job line? So my mission is that uh, an interview is, you know, it's not a process that uh, all of us should be afraid of. In fact, interview is a process where you need to, all of us need to take it very, very uh, sportingly, you know, very, very uh, excited, in an excited manner. An interview is a process where you need to express yourself well. You need to point out what is your clarity in life. You need to point out how uh, good a professional you want to become. Right? So in an interview, the first point that anybody will look forward to is the clarity of your career. That's the first thing that we look. I would request all of you to uh, uh, to uh, see a movie. This is a movie by Satyajit Ray, right? He's a prominent uh, filmmaker uh, in the eastern part, and of course now he's globally recognized. He made a film. He made a movie in 1971 or 72, right? The name of the movie is Pratidwandi or Competitor. Is a small snapshot of an interview shown in that movie. A young engineer going to give an interview. He's a jobless engineer. He is uh, going from here to there to look for a job. And uh, they show uh, in the movie that he is uh, going for an interview and they show the interview. Right. So please make it a point that you uh, look at uh, YouTube and you look at this movie and you look at this interview. Right. You will get what I want to say. Everybody in, the, in an interview is trying to find out how good a professional you have become after so much, you know, spending so much time, 17, 18 years, right? Learning the technical side of things, learning the behavioral side, how good a professional you are, point number one. Point number two, uh, sorry, point number two. Point number one was that the clarity in your career. You have seen a good 17, 18 years of, uh, you know, vocations, subject matter. Now you need to uh, be very clear about what do you want to do in the next 18 years. Right? You should be uh, very clear about it. Second, as I said, you have to be clear about your point of view. What we look forward in an interview to any uh, graduate or postgraduate, we want to look where, whether he has a clarity in life. And second, whether the person holds his point of view, whether he has that capability of discussion, whether the, he has the capability of argument, whether he has the capability of expressing himself, whether he has the capability of communicating his point of view, Every human being, professional, or uh, you know, in his business, needs to communicate a point of view, a stand. Right? You have to take a stand. You have to express yourself. You can't be always in the gray. You have to be either black or white. Whenever you are spotted in the gray, you know what they call in today's reality show. You are in the zone. So you can't be in the gray. You should always be in black or white, whatever be the both sides of things. So we are, we see whether the resource has his point of view on a small level, micro level, medium level, or a major level, depending upon, you know, the position that he or she is appearing. For. So it's very important to have a clarity on your career, on your subject matter. Second, it is very important to express or develop a point of view about everything. There is a business environment that is around you. If you talk to a person or if the interview asks you that you have uh, chosen your field, 
you have chosen to be in people management you have chosen to be in the uh, field of human resources what is the proof that you are passionate about people right so most of uh, the time when we are asked this question what is the proof of your passion towards your profession or for in our case passion towards people management you know most of the people say you know we are uh, we, we we like being amongst people we like communicating with people we feel comfortable within uh, within within uh, with you know group of people right and that is why we have chosen to be in people man i'm sorry that's a very stupid and a rubbish answer right you need to have reasons for expressing your passion you need need to have solid proofs for making hr as one of your careers and one of your passions so you need to be connected with the correct tools and techniques you need to be connected with the subject matter of making people successful as i said you need to be connected with the transformational agenda you need to see that it's your responsibility to make people productive so it's a highly creative field right so in an interview process please be very clear about what contribution you bring to the industry what contribution you bring to the job right what value you add to the business you need to be very clear about this that as human resource professionals you need to be completely connected with the business environment you should have the complete awareness if not the practice the practice will come slowly and slowly but the awareness about the business environment about various functions and you need to be very clear and express it during your interviews what value will you bring to the people management practice what of course it has to be supported with your knowledge that to be supported with the scientificness of your profession it has to be supported by the by data right third and most important thing as i said the subject matter you need to be quite conversant with your subject you need to know the modern conventional tools you need to know the modern techniques you need to be aware about the tangible and intangible side of practices that are being developed globally in the human resource development world as of now there are much much more serious practices happening in the developed countries you need to be uh, plugged in to those uh, new things which are happening you need to see the change in environment which has happened post covid uh people are working from home so now you need to also see that uh, the productivity of human beings is under a serious question mark the engagement engaging people because now they are remotely placed so what are the tools and techniques for engaging people remotely how would you actually bring productivity in this atmosphere that calls for a lot of reading my dear fellows a lot of reading a lot of research and plugging yourself to a lot of modern conventional content also one of the important part is to understand the technology aspect technology aspect has become very important right now only functionality or only business functionality will not do you need to see that hr happens through automation there are many hr softwares today if i somebody asks you in an interview how many hr softwares you have probably been able to know i expect a few good answers i expect that sir i have i have looked at some of the hr softwares whether they are, whether it is spine or whether it is hr one or whether it is this or that or whether it is zoho everybody now knows about the story of zoho right such a such a down to earth and uh, such a uh, you know a very uh, low profile entrepreneur who has shifted from the developed country to his own uh, you know god's own country kerala he is the entrepreneur for zoho he has set up uh, entire uh, you know that's that, that's that's what i called you know he's trying to make atmanirbhar bharat 
so you need to understand about uh, the tetelori side you should understand about the fraternities or the people who are there in your ecosystem so expecting that you know about business environment expecting that you know about your tools and techniques and expecting that you know about technology please be prepared with these three things and you know you can talk with a head on your shoulders that's very important along with the clarity along with the contribution uh, that you uh, you know the clarity of the career and the contribution of the or the value that you bring into the system as such so hr again plays a very important part in the in the business ecosystem as i said i will just now like to, like to talk about uh, 10 to 15 minutes about uh, the business model that we are trying to develop in order to help the industry uh the industry is facing a huge crisis right now the industry is facing a vacuum on one hand there is a huge amount of manpower requirement on the other hand there is high amount of unemployment right uh can the can both the things be same can both the things coexist you know the entrepreneurs or the business people are saying that there's a huge amount of people that we need there's a huge amount of uh, manpower that we need at the same time the students are saying the people are saying that there is a huge amount of unemployment now for me it's like uh, how the sun and the moon can be there at the same time so we so we need to answer this question we need to solve this puzzle right of how are we contributing as an hr training firm or as, or as or as a management consultant to a lot of msmes in india gujarat has almost 3 and a half lakh msmes right we are trying to see that we create this capabilities much early in somebody's life normally when you become when you get into your hr careers you get into a uh, you know a, a recruitment profile you get into an hr journalistic profile and it takes good 10 12 15 years for you to understand the hr practical hr model or the you know, the, the the pragmatic ways of operating in a people management environment this is the capability which is desired by the industry so what we are trying to do we are trying to develop an intermediate solution wherein we have we are we are consulting with a lot of uh, business businesses we are consulting with a lot of msmes and a lot of uh, mid to large companies and we know what kind of requirements they have to run their ecosystems in order to fulfill that we have developed a practical training model so for the human resource functions now we are seeing that wherever we want hr ecosystems to be run or people ecosystems to be run right these are the people who will probably be very instrumental and will be able to deliver much earlier in their career and learn things much faster than in a conventional ecosystem so we have set up a backward integration for the industry we have said that let us try to create resources which are fully ready in terms of the practical and pragmatic hr trainings so that they are also able to achieve things which are achieved probably you know in 8 10 12 or 15 years they are able to achieve it much faster in their life and therefore they are able to contribute to businesses much much faster in the business ecosystem and the business cycle so we concentrate towards creating this practical modules train uh interns for this kind of uh, function and create you know a resource pool so that the industry is able to you know take advantage of this resource pool we are able to put such hr people or we are able to put such team of hr people 
in our uh, in our uh, small medium uh, large companies they grow up faster than uh, is usually uh, usually happens and they are able to contribute in a much larger diversified way than only a transactional man this initiative is from our side to see that we create more transformational hr professionals and they are able to contribute much faster in the business ecosystem of india right so that's where i probably would like to rest my case and uh, i will have uh, another 5 10 minutes so uh, uh, roshni you can tell people to have some questions i would like to answer all the students questions or uh, whatever questions they would have excellent sir this is one of the most admirable session that any b school can ever have uh, nice. we are extremely blessed to have you as a speaker for the day and uh, during the session uh, we got the idea about many concept either it's a skill that we should possess or uh, opportunities that the hr people have uh, but uh, during the session i recall one of the quote uh that is given by mr richard uh, sir which states that train your people well enough so that they can live and treat them well enough so they don't have to live and uh, in addition to this i totally agreed on the point that you are in the wrong direction if the only reason you are in it is salary so uh thank you so much for your invaluable input and for pushing us to be the part of uh, the best that we can ever have so uh, quickly moving towards our question answer round very first question is what five qualities do the employees lack in the current corporate world okay and this is this is a general question probably or for hr uh, for our hr resources i will take it as a general question right the first as i said uh, uh, roshni the first thing that we look uh, for you know uh, young people we are looking for you know a clarity in his career so uh, clarity of all sorts what does he want to do what does he want to create what does he want to be part of right this is the, this is one of the first thing that uh, we look for second we need to look at his cognitive and articulative skills so we try to look at what he is aware of what he is able to do by himself what he is able to independently carry out and how articulative or how solution oriented he is right third we look at his uh, personal side we try to look at his how good uh, you know a personality he is about communicating about uh, presenting about expressing his views right we also uh, now it is the industry practice that we do a psychometric test for all the hires medium to uh, middle level to senior level we do a psychometric test we find out about the psychological or the psychometric balance of mind of the person and the kind of tests we have we can predict somebody's psychology to as good as 70 80% accuracy right so we have the modern conventional tool for that fourth we look up, we look for the synergy we look for the his point of views in general in life right we look for his conviction his intent that what kind of uh, general point of views what kind of conviction he has about general things in life so we are we, we we know that what kind of maturity the profile has right and fifth and uh, not the it's not the i would say the least but uh, we look forward to the creativity and the innovation part of it the problem solving the creativity the innovation right these are the five aspects probably which uh, everybody would like to look at in some degree or the other 
Absolutely, sir. We got that point. So uh, the next question is, during this uh, crisis time, most of the company changed their work style from office to remote working. So it's big hustle for employees to certainly adapt the changes. And many of them also resist to change. So how do you handle this situation? OK. Now, there are two parts of this uh, environment, actually. One part is technology oriented and one part is non technology oriented. Right. I believe the technology oriented universe has able, been able to adopt well. Right. They have the necessary technology to remotely function, uh, you know, uh, with the employees. What has uh, become unmanageable is the traditional part of the business. The non-technology part of it, where we cannot, we will be. Uh, how do we manage on-field engineers? How do we manage uh, very interactive uh, businesses, or where we have to meet the client, etc. Right. So there are very simple techniques to manage it that we have been uh, telling. You need to, of course, learn technology. Right. Today, let us take the simple example. I would actually been. Had it been pre-2020, I would have been on your campus. I would have been on your campus. I would have stood on a dais. I would have addressed your uh, crowd uh, on a, in a classroom, right? And here I am. I am addressing you on a virtual platform. I am addressing you on a, you know, on a, on a kind of a technology platform, right? So first thing is that we need to adopt to uh, technology. Similar. Similar similar things we have done at our personal level, right? We have adopted to wallets. We are adopted to internet banking, right? So uh, we have been doing this technology oriented uh, training to all our people. How do you adopt to technology, right? In your personal life also and in your professional life also, you need to see that you adopt to technology. That is number one. Second, how do you communicate now? When you had been under the ceiling, you know, in an office, you have been in a floor, you have been 30, 40, 50, 100 people together, and you have had a, you, you meet in lunch, you go, with a, you, you go for a smoke or you go for a meeting, right? That was the atmosphere earlier. Now, you don't have people around you at all. You are probably working from home or probably working in an office, which has got half the strength, etc. Fine. That takes a toll on you because maybe let us understand that 50% of the people are extroverts. They like to communicate. They like to you know, uh, do things in an, in an associative manner. They like to do things in a team. But here, physically, you are not available. So how do you work in a team? Right? So the second thing that we are training people and counseling people is the communication part of it. Right? The communication has to be very active. The communication has to, has to be, uh, you know, the level of activity should be shown up in the communication. We are creating various things like chat boxes, forums, etc., where you know a person is working, he can uh, quit for five minutes, like he goes to have a cup of tea. You know, he can shift to the chat uh, chat boards, or he can chat, he can shift to the forums, right? Come there and see that okay, three of his friends are there in the forum. In a, you know, in that particular chat room or in that particular forum, have a quick chat or have a take quick guidance about how things are happening. So, communicating or teaching people how to communicate in various modes is the second important part. And third, and the most important, is engaging people on different platforms. So, whether it is a manager engaging a subordinate. Whether it is a team leader engaging the you know the team or engaging the employees as such, the employee engagement platform has to be freshly created. There has to be important modules. We have set up a couple of modules. We have set up uh, you know a module like a idea center module. We are encouraging people who are working from the companies on a remote basis, right, to ideate. We have set up a remote program 
for people uh, for rewarding people with good ideas whether it is work from home whether it is handling productivity whether it is whether it is, whether it is handling uh, performance or whether it is general you know improvement in the working standards so everybody we have designed a program called an idea centric program and we are encouraging people to contribute to ideas and we are also holding virtual award ceremonies online we have also developed a new uh, platform which is a value based you know uh, platform that how you are going beyond the call of duty how you are going beyond the call of duty how a person is able to counsel or probably guide his friends his peers right how is he able to become a good team leader now you have 24 hours you can probably now in a remote environment you can talk to everybody 24 hours at your own uh, sweet uh, you know point in time so you connect to people better you connect to people better you try to engage them to different different platforms to different programs right so we are running this serious programs we are running the idea center program we are running the value vision programs so we are running certain engagement programs which keep the people you know which expand the mind space because staying in a particular place for 6 8 months it's completely locked down it's not a physical lockdown it's a mental lockdown right so trying to create programs through which more involvement can happen more engagement with people can happen people can contribute we have we also you can be suggesting uh, all the corporates to start the newsletter right a virtual newsletter and contribution from every employee sitting at home you know you can have a brain web and you can write a small anecdote you can you can put a small uh, pro you can create a small story right and you can send it to us and we uh, will try to see that there is a newsletter monthly newsletter which is developed so that everyone's contribution how they are feeling so we are giving a way out we are giving a way out to employees to become expressive right so the engagement becomes better so these are the three things i feel should be done very very fiercely in these times totally agree sir and uh, even i personally feel that if uh, we will get hr like you then we will have definitely no problem to coming at workplace thank you so uh, yeah so uh, with uh, here we are and with our question answer session and uh, uh, with uh, uh, our good note we are going to conclude this session but uh, before winding up this session i would like to thank you for your uh, valuable input and uh, for uh, this interesting and informative session on human resources uh, because your years of experience your depth understanding on subject matter your ability to present this complex things in a such a easy manner it's like sone pe suhaga for all of us so thank you so much sir for your uh, kind efforts uh, and that is totally selfless efforts so it's uh, like privilege moment for all of us to have you so thank uh, you. with that note thank you so much and hope to connect with you as early as possible sir my pleasure thank you for everything You okay goodbye thank you sir bye sir